We bless you this morning. Thank you, choir, for your ministry. The Lord bless you and continue to increase his grace upon your life. We appreciate your sacrifice. It's not easy to be in the choir. I'm sure you know that. For those that have tried it, they have to be there all the time, consistently. Don't worry. Your consistency will pay off. Hallelujah. Because I know a God that rewards. He doesn't hold any man. Just keep doing what you're doing. And thank you for the ministry of the musician. We appreciate them. Let's clap for our musician this morning. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Let's bow our head this morning as we go to the word. Father, we bless you. Jehovah, we pray that within the limited time we have, you will speak to us. Lord Almighty is not the letter, but the spirit. May your spirit be released upon us this morning to breathe upon your word, expand it in our light, make it simple for us to understand. And Lord, let there be a change in our life, O God, today by your word, in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. Lord, speak through the speaker. I don't have the eloquence or the right word, but I pray that your spirit will assist this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. As we know, this is our month of witnessing. Praise God. And then what was dropping my spirit to share with us is the power of a witness. The power of a witness. I, will, I understand the power of a witness a lot because of what I do by nature, uh, what I do uh, secularly. Without a witness, uh, a lot of time I can't prove my case. And many a times I will have to say that I offer no evidence. Why? Because my witness didn't turn up. And so that would be the end of my case. And the judge will say, all right, defendant, rise up, not guilty, dismissed. You are free to go. Hallelujah. So I know the power of a witness in my secular life because of what I do. But then this morning we want to talk about the power of a witness in relation to the gospel. Hallelujah. And I pray that God will speak to us. You know, when we talk about evangelism, many a times that word, the moment you hear evangel, <laughs> some people block it. They're like, ah, no, I, that's not my calling. That's not my calling. But can I ask you this morning, how many have bought something and they ask you to give a review of what you bought? Hallelujah. How many have bought something, a product? How many have bought a product and recommend it to another person? Do you want to wave your hand? Not all of us. other people, you've never bought a product and recommend. Sister Abby, you never bought a lipstick and said to my friend, my God, go to that shop. Man, they sell the best lipstick there. <laughs> Stabby, have you done that before? All right. Oh, I'm sure. I've seen, there are many things I've seen on you. I was, oh, Sister Abby, I think I need to check you out and check your shop where you go. Praise God. So all of us have recommended products to people before, isn't it? And you visited hotels and they've asked you to write a review or you bought something on Amazon. Amazon is always chasing you, isn't it? They will tell you to write a report. Can you just write a review on this product? Hallelujah. Why? So that it helps other people that might be interested in the product to find out and say, mm, let me read the review. How many, before you buy something, you read reviews? Or you went to an hotel, you read reviews? Hallelujah. That's how they rate hotels, isn't it? Hallelujah. They give them stars by the review that people have given. Praise God. And so, that's a witness. That's just what it is. That's just a witness. Hallelujah. So, let me not go ahead of my notes. Let's go to the word. Hallelujah. Power of a witness. And so, I, went, I checked the dictionary to find out what's the meaning of a witness. Who is a witness? A person who sees an event... Typically, a crime or an accident or an incident take place, like this morning. If they ask all of us, did you see Pastor Tutu in church today? What would you all say? And they say, are you sure? Say, of course, yes, 100%. And then you start to describe what she was wearing, how she looked, how you give all of that. And say, oh, I don't know. So by the time two people said it, the Bible says what? The Bible says out of the mouth of two or three witnesses, a matter shall be established. That's what operates in the court of law too. By the time two people are saying the same thing, they say, ah, they cannot be lying. Ah. Even when they want to test their, they will test their account and check them out, shake them and see if they are lying. 
they sometimes find out they are not lying. They are telling exactly what they are saying. So that's what a witness does. You will give an account of what you are saying. Hallelujah. And another definition say a person who had knowledge of a development from observation or experience. When you experience something, they, you will say, I know that I know that I know that that, that's, that that food is delicious. Why? Because you have experienced it. You tasted it. You are able to speak from your experience. That's the job of a witness. That's what a witness does. A witness helps to solve mystery. They are sharing what they have seen, had, and experienced. Praise the name of the Lord. When we go into the gospel, the four uh, synoptic gospel, that's Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, hallelujah, you know that they are the account of people that witnessed, that saw Christ, that were with him. They experienced him, and they experienced his ministry. So they were able to give us an accurate account. They were able to describe in detail for us what happened. Hallelujah. And one of the things you find out about witnesses is that if you put all of us in this room this morning, even if I choose five people, and we ask you to describe what happened in church today, do you, be, do you know that your account will be different in certain areas because of maybe your perception, maybe the way you see things, or maybe the way you express, there are some things that will be the same among you, but there will be, you will see, you will see different angles to these different things. Maybe as you, I'm, I'm talking now, some people are, their attention is on my microphone. Oh, she's just waving the microphone around. Some might just say she's just dancing about. It depends on what catching your attention. And so when we put you all together, you'll be able to describe to us in fuller detail. So that's what we see in the Synoptic Gospel. You will know that Mark focused more on the miracles of Jesus. Mark, in fact, the moment Mark started, it's as if he couldn't wait to start telling you about all the wonders and the things that Christ did. And then when you go to John, John help us to begin to talk about Jesus' personality, about him as a person. So if you want to know more about Christ as a person, look at the book of John. He began to tell you who is he. And when you come to Matthew, Matthew like history. Matthew wants to analyze it and tell you how he was born. He will tell you his genealogy. He will tell you everything. So Matthew was quite detailed in relation to the to the, the, the gener to the genealogy of Christ because his main focus is to prove that Christ was the son of God. So that was the focus of Matthew when he was writing his synoptic. And then when you come to Luke, Luke was a physician and he looked at Christ in the, that, with that eyes to begin to describe the miracles of Jesus, how he heals. Because why? He was a physician. So you see our perception the way we see things is influenced by, by who we are and what we, how we see things. So that is, we can see all of that. So all of them, can you imagine if we don't, when we read all the gospel together, what happened? It comes alive to us, doesn't it? As if we were there. And that's the job of a witness. A job makes some, a witness makes something come alive. They paint the picture before you and you begin to see yourself in the story. And you, when you, you know, we give God praise. So that's the job of a witness. That is the job of a witness, to make you feel as if you were there. There are some people that are so beautiful storyteller. By the time they start and they finish, you will know that. You will feel as if you were there and you saw everything. Because why? Because of their detailed description. And so that's what we saw in the synoptic. And let me read what, the beginning of Luke chapter 1. Luke chapter 1, verse 1 to 4. This is how... Luke, the physician, started the description. He said, Inasmuch as many have taken in hands to set in order a narrative of those things which had been fulfilled among us, just as those who were from the beginning were eyewitnesses and ministers of the word delivered them to us, it seems good to me also, having had perfect understanding of all the things from the very first, to write to you an orderly account, most excellent Theophilus, that you may know the certainty of those things in which you were instructed. That's why he wrote, so that you know the certainty. Oh. And so what, what, from that particular passage, you could see the 
job of a witness is to help us to know the certainty of a thing, of a person, or of an event. By the time they describe it, you are very sure that it happened. Praise the name of the Lord. And one of the things I'm connecting to this morning is that's one of the names that God called us. God called us a witness. That's the name, one of the names that God called us. Bible says in, the, in Isaiah chapter 43, Isaiah chapter 43, verse 10 to 12. And God said, you are my witnesses, says the Lord. And my servants whom I have chosen, that you may know and believe and understand that I am he. Before me, there was no God formed, nor shall there be after me. I, even I, I am the Lord. And beside me, there is no savior. I have declared and saved. I have proclaimed, and there was no foreign God among you. He said, therefore, you are my witnesses, says the Lord, that I am God. We are God's witnesses. To say that God is God, we are the witnesses. We are the one that will tell the world that God is God. Hallelujah. A fool said in his heart that there is no God. And when you are experienced God, when you have experienced God, you will understand why the Bible says they are fools. And you'll be able to tell them, no, God is real. How, how, can, how is God real? How is God real? You know what? I was pregnant. My baby, no, not me. I'm just giving a testimony of someone. I was pregnant and my baby died in my womb. And then there was a prayer because that's one of the testimony we had from our conference with Daddy Gio this weekend. I had, and my baby was prayed for and my baby came back alive. So that person, so don't tell me that God is not real. All of us have experienced God in one way or the other, haven't we? All of us have testimony of the miracles of God. We've been sick before and he has healed us. Yes, we've been down before and he has lifted us up. So we can tell the Eden and the old world that God is real. I know my God. I know that I might know that I know that I know that God is real. So God said, you are my witnesses that I am God. And what's the job of a witness? To tell, isn't it? Your job is to tell. Your job is to tell. Let's look at this, what the scripture says. David said, David said in Psalm 34, verse 8, David said, Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man who trusts in him. How many have tasted of the Lord and they know the Lord is good? Hey, he lifted me from the merry clay and set my feet upon the rock to stay. Hallelujah. Our journey, I'm sure the journey that has brought us from where we are to where we are now is a mighty one. He lifted me up on a mari, from the mary clay and set my feet upon the rock to stay. Don't let me go there and start singing. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Let's look at the disciples this morning. The disciples as well as witnesses. When Jesus went about, do you know how many? Let me just give you an exam. Anyway, I'll tell you the answer. Among all the disciples, how many of them did Jesus call by himself? Do you know the answer? If you know the answer, just wave your hand and tell us. Yes, mommy. How many did Jesus call by himself? Mommy, sit down. Thank you, ma. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Clap for mommy. <laughs> no, mommy. He didn't call Peter by himself. Only one I read in the scripture, among the 12, that he invited. Yes, the first one. Okay, let me say the four because he called. Matthew joined, actually, Matthew, the tax collector, joined him. The only person that he was going about and he called by himself was Philip. Andrew, when Andrew came, Andrew was the first disciple. Why did he come to Jesus? John the Baptist says, Behold, the Lamb of God that took away the sin of the old world. What happened? Andrew followed him. And when Andrew left him, he went home and said, Ah, Peter, come. Amen. Let's look at the scripture. The Bible says in John chapter 1, verse 40 to 42, And one of the two who had John speak and followed him was Andrew, Simon Peter's brother. And he found his own brother, Simon, and said to him, We have found the Messiah, which is translated the Christ. And he brought him to Jesus. 
Now, when Jesus looked at him, he said, you are Simon, the son of Jonah. You shall be called Cephas, which translated a stone. And so, Andrew went home and brought Peter to Jesus. So, let's look again. P Philip, after Jesus had caught Philip, what did, you, what did Philip do? Philip went away again. We can see that in, first, in John chapter 1, verse 43 to 46. And the Bible says that the following day, Jesus wanted to go to Galilee. And he found Philip and said to him, follow me. Now Philip was from Beth Bethesda, the city of Andrew and Peter. Philip found Nathanael and said to him, We have found him, of whom Moses in the law, and also the prophet wrote, jo Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. And Nathanael uh, said to him, Can anything good come out of Nazareth? Philip said to him, Come and see. Come and see. You have been called to the ministry of come and see. How many people invite people to their church and say, just come and see? Hallelujah. Don't worry, Sister Johnny. I'm going to give you an award one day. One day. I'm counting. One day. I will give you an award. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. You invite people to your church, just come and see. We just enjoy God here. We had a great time here. Great things is happening in our church. How many of us go out to tell people that? We need to give review of our church and let people come. Do you know people are already hearing about you? People are hearing about you, about what you do. Praise God. Remember this weekend when we went on our conference, there are many people that stopped me. Oh, Pastor Dudu. I said, how do you know me? Oh, Blue Sky Citadel. We are always at the prayer meeting. Oh, thank you very much, ma. God, I don't know them, but... The work that we are doing in the church is speaking for us. It's speaking for us. Because why? They can see they are being blessed. That is witness. That is, that's all we can do to witness. Come and see. That's our job. And I pray that you will take on that ministry of come and see. Seriously from now on. In the name of Jesus. A witness tell of their experience. And may you tell of your experience with the Lord in the name of the Lord Jesus. And after you have experienced a product, like I said earlier on, you invite people to come and see, to come and experience it. And that is one thing about me. Anytime I experience something nice, I always like to tell people. Always like, oh, I've tried this thing. It's very good. Oh, try it. I will even go to some extent and buy the thing for you as well. Just so you can experience what I have experienced. Hallelujah. Because that is all that Christ requires of us to do. So one of the things I found out in scripture, you might not believe me, but this is my own interpretation. I believe that Jesus started the ministry of show and tell. Believe me. I believe that Jesus started it. Praise God. And I want to show you from scripture why I said that. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. You remember the story of the mad man of gathering? They said the man, yes, the man that was demon possessed in the, in the tomb, in the graveyard. Hallelujah. Because of our time. Mark. Is, is recorded in Mark chapter 5, verse 1 to 20, from verse 1 to 20. Hallelujah. The Bible says that that particular time Jesus came there, and when Jesus got to this place, the man, let, let me read this to you. I, I just want to read the first five verse, just to show you something of the power of a witness. And because we are not there, when I read this out, I'm sure you will feel as if you were there on that day. The Bible says in Mark chapter 1, to well, chapter 5, verse 1 to 5. He said, Then they came to the other side of the sea, to the country of the gathering. And when he had come out of the boat, immediately there met him out of the tombs, a man with an unclean spirit, who had his dwelling among the tombs. Look at all the description. No one could bind him, not even, not even with chains, because he had often been bound with shackles and chains, and the chains had been pulled apart by him. Can you see the picture? And the shackles broken in pieces. Neither could anyone tame him. And always, night and day, he was on the mountains and in the tombs, crying out, cutting himself with stone. Can you see the picture? The witness was able to describe to us about this man. And the Bible says the moment this man saw Jesus, the Bible says that the moment he saw him, he said to him, why, what have I to do with you? He said, what have I to do with you, Jesus, son of the most high? I implore you by God that you do not torment me. He began to paint the picture. And then Jesus said to the man, you unclean spirit, come out of him. And Jesus asked, what, are, what is your name? He said, legion, because we are many. 
And then the, 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 the evil spirit were speaking to Jesus and asking, okay, we don't, we don't cast us anywhere, just cast us into those swine. There are about 22,000 swines there, pigs they call them. And they cast us into them. And then Jesus said, okay, I give you permission, end times. You know, see the graphic description and where I'm going. Where I'm going is after Jesus has healed the man. The people in the town, they heard about what was happening. Because why? All the 2,000 pigs, what they happened? They ran into the, into the sea and they perished there. And the people in the town said, what? No, 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 please just pack, pack your bag and go. Leave us, leave us. We don't want you here. Go away. And then what happened? The scripture says that when the people came, what happened? They saw the man who had been demon possessed, that has been tearing himself apart. They saw him seated, dressed up in his right mind. And then they looked at him. And look, let's look at verse 17. I will read verse 17 to 20 to us. And then they began to plead with him to depart from their region. And when he got into the boat, he who had been demon-possessed begged him that he might be with him. However, Jesus did not permit him, but said to him, Go home to your friends and tell them what great things the Lord has done for you and how he has had compassion on you. Verse 20, And he departed and began to proclaim in Decapolis, all that Jesus had done for him and all marvel. Can you see? That is the job of a witness. Jesus, that is show and tell, isn't it? The man went about and began to tell him, do you know, I want to tell you what he has done for my soul. Can you imagine when Jesus raised Lazarus from the dead, what happened? Many people came to come and see the man who was dead. Who was dead for four days. Why? Because their life began to speak about Christ. Has God done anything for you? Has God done any miracle for you? Witnessing is not about telling people alone about Jesus. It's telling people what he has done for you. Look at me. Look at my life. Any opportunity to have, tell them what God has done for you. That is your witness. Ah, I have a testimony. Do you know what? Don't join them to say, oh, the weather is so horrible. It's so horrible today. No, that's not your business. The one that is doing his own job. If it didn't rain, we won't have product to eat. If there's no cold, do you know if there's no cold? If the weather is not cold, our fruit will not ripen. And our, they said that our fruit will not ripen, that it will not be sweet. But when we have a cold winter, then our, our fruit will be sweet. That's what I had. Don't ask me. That's what I had. <laughs> I'm not an agriculturist. That's what I had. They said when the winter is very cold, then our fruits will be sweet. So can you imagine? And when the winter is there, it kills all the bacteria and all things, you know. Everyone, everything that God made and created is doing their own job. So do your own job too. Tell them, God has been good to me. When they say, ah, I, often they will say, oh, Tutu, we'll see you tomorrow. I say, you will see me by the grace of God. Why? I didn't tell, because why? I'm pointing it out. I'm saying you can subtly be telling them, putting God in their faces. Be putting God in their faces. Wow, you are so, oh, you are so good at what you do. Ah, thank God is the grace of God. It's not, by, it's not by power, opportunity to call truth. It's not by the power of my mind, but by the spirit of God. The spirit of God dwells inside of me, you know, and he's the spirit that is empowering me to do what I'm doing. I can't do it on my own. You are turning their faces, and then they begin to ask questions. The Lord will help us. We are witnesses. Please tell them. Show them. When you go out there, tell them about Jesus. Point their attention to Christ and away from their problem. People will come with their problem. You know, many a time people around me, you, you will be so amazed. A lot of conversation we have in the courtroom when the, ju the judge is not there, when nobody is sitting, and then we're just chatting. And then conversation rose and we began to talk. People will begin to tell you about their life. There was a story of, it was, it's just a miserable st uh, story. He was just saying to himself, he's just getting ready to die. I said, why do you say that? You can leave. There is hope for you. I'll begin to talk to him. He tell me, oh, my wife, you know what my wife did? I used to be a rich man. My wife spent all my money. He took all my money away. He went and married another person. He took my children away. I said, but you are still alive. There is hope for you. You can turn things around. God can change things for you. 
you know, you begin to say, you know, there are a lot of things. People will come to you and begin to tell you stories. And then you can use it to, to point them to Jesus. Are you not? That's evangelism. You don't need to write evangelism. Just be a witness. Just tell good stories. Tell them about the Lord. Hallelujah. And lastly, what about the encounter of the woman of, Samari of the Samaritan? We all know the story. We all know the story of the woman of Samaritan, uh, the Samaritan woman by the, pool, uh, by, the, by the well in Sychar. The Bible says that Jesus was passing by and he just needed to pass that area because he knew that woman was coming. You know that God knows everything. Hallelujah. And he knew that woman, that's our time to be saved. And this day is your day. May you not miss your day of appointment with God in Jesus' name. And the, Jesus was sitting down by the well waiting for her. Ah, and she came. And Jesus said, woman, give me a drink. He said, ah, drink. We thought you, Jew, don't speak to Samaritan. He said, ah, if you know the one who is speaking to you, you will ask him to give you living water. He said, living water? You don't even have anything to pull water from the well. How are you going to get this living water? Ah, he said, the water I'm going to give you, it will become in you a living water. That well up unto eternity. And I said, ah, ah. And I said, give me, okay, give me this living water. Jesus now said, he said to the Jesus, give me this living water. Jesus said, okay, you go and bring your husband. Then I will give you the living water. I said, ah, husband. I don't have husband. He said, you have spoken right. You don't have husband. You had four. Even, in fact, all the ones you've had, they are not your, the one you are living with right now is not your husband. He said, ah, ah, how do you know about me? So the conversation went on. Can you see that? All from just give me a drink. All from just give me a drink. And that's why sometimes, a lot of time, when God is involved in a conversation, you never know how he's going to travel. I like conversation. I'm sure you know. I like conversation. Conversation can move. If the spirit of God is present, you just start with just one thing. And then he began to move. And then he began to move. And all of a sudden, Jesus told her. And Bible says that at a point, she just dropped her, her bucket and ran to town. He said, eh? Come, 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 come and see, come and see. I saw a man who told me everything I've ever done in my life. Could this be the Savior? He said, eh, we too want to come. They ran. They wanted to see. And they came and they saw. Hallelujah. They came and saw. So, may God be involved in every conversation you hold with people in the name of Jesus. God will lead you to people that are ready, waiting to hear God. And God will put the right word. The Bible says that he teaches my ears to hear as a learned. He opened my mouth continually to speak as one. You know, to have the right word in season to those who are weary. Just a sentence from your mouth can stop a man from committing suicide. Just a sentence from your mouth can change the life of somebody. Can say, ah, because you told me that. That gave me hope. That gave, you gave me hope. Be someone that gives hope to people. A lot of people are hopeless in their life, but we have the word of hope. Let's speak the word of hope into their life. Just a word can change the life of somebody. And I pray that the Lord Jehovah will help us in the name of the Lord Jesus. The Samaritan woman met her salvation. And the Bible says that she went about, it's like 23 now, 26. And the Bible says, let me just read this last scripture and then I'll run, wrap up. John chapter 4, verse, 3, 20, uh, verse 39 to 42. And many of the Samaritans of that city believe in him because of the word of the woman who testified. Did she preach the gospel? What did she do? She testified. She testified the goodness of God. She told them of what had happened. And the Bible says, he told, her all that, he told me all that I, have ever, I ever did. So when the Samaritans had come to him, they urged him to stay with them. And he stayed there two days. And many more believed because of his own word. Then they said to the woman, now we believe. Not because of what you said. For we ourselves have heard him. And we know that this is indeed the Christ, the Savior of the whole world. Just is just to draw them. Holy Spirit will finish the work. We are just introducers. That's what we are. Witnesses, introducers, and then the Holy Spirit, you will just commit them to the hand of the Holy Spirit and Jesus will feel, finish the rest. Hallelujah. Yours might be to sow the seed and somebody else will come and finish the work. But all we need to do is just go out, tell somebody about God. 
tell somebody about God. Hallelujah. The Lord will use your mouth to speak for him in the name of the Lord Jesus. And the key thing is that we are not doing it by our own might, by our own power. He has infused us with the power of the Holy Spirit. And Jesus said in Acts chapter 1 verse 8, he said, you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I just invite us to please rise this morning. I just want us to rise this morning. I want us to just lift up our, our heart to God and ask the Lord, Father, please help me to witness for you. Lord, help me to share your good news. We are bearer of good news. Father, help me to share good news in the name of the Lord Jesus. Help me, almighty Father, this morning. Jehovah, use my mouth to speak your word. Use me to speak your word, O God. Use me to be a witness. Let me be a witness for you. Let me be a witness, Father. Lead me to souls that are looking for you. Use me, lead me to hungry souls that need to hear you. That need to hear the good news of the gospel. That need to hear the hope that you bring, O God, in the name of the Lord Jesus. Help me, Almighty Father. Help me, Jehovah God. You said you are sending us out to reap where we have not sown. You said others have labored and we have entered into their labor. May we begin to enter into the labor of the Lord in the name of Jesus. Christ has already shed his blood and purchased the souls of men. Well, ours is to go forth and proclaim what he has already done. Father, this morning, use my mouth, oh God. Use my mouth. Use our mouth, oh God, to witness for you in the name of the Lord Jesus. Father, not by mind, not by power, but by your spirit. Not by mind, not by power, but by your spirit. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Father, fill me, oh God, this morning. Fill me with your strength. Fill me with your strength. Fill me with your strength, Almighty Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus. Oh, empower me, O oh God. Empower me, Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus. Father, empower me this morning. Let me be filled with the power of the Holy Spirit. Let me be filled with the power of the Holy Spirit in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus. Praise the name of the Lord. This morning, I want to speak to and, and pray for people that, you know, one way or the other, witnessing is a challenge for you. Witnessing is a challenge. Just to open your mouth, you are, in fact, paralyzed with fear. This morning, we want to pray for you, especially that. And if you have not received the baptism of the Holy Spirit, you can also come forward. Anyone that have not received the baptism of the Holy Spirit this morning, Please come forward. Anyone this morning that you find speaking to people about Christ a challenge, please come forward so we can pray for you this morning in the name of the Lord Jesus. Ah, Father, we thank you. We give you all the glory, O oh God, in the name of the Lord Jesus. Let your power, O oh God Almighty, rest afresh upon us this morning in the name of the Lord Jesus. Anyone in this house this morning, is every one of us filled with the Holy Spirit? Are we all filled with the Holy Spirit? If we are filled with the Holy Spirit, I want us in the next two minutes to begin to speak in tongues. Let's begin to pray in the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Uh, to, I praise the Lord. Please come forward, man. Let's begin to pray in the Holy Spirit. Let's pray for them that, Lord, you will fill them with your power this morning. You will fill them with your power this morning. Father, fill your daughters with your power. Let the Spirit of the living God fall afresh upon you in the name of the Lord Jesus. Father, Lord, Lord God of heaven, and now we pray for your daughter this morning. I just want us to continue to pray in the spirit as we pray for our, the Father, Lord Almighty. I lift your daughter before you this morning. Spirit of the living God, I pray you will fill her afresh in the name of the Lord Jesus. Spirit of God, fill her the power of the Holy Spirit Lord, upon you in the name of Jesus. With the evidence of speaking In Jesus' mighty name. And let's just begin to pray for 
Father, we pray. Spread this morning, Spirit of the Lord, fill us afresh. Spirit of the Living God, fill us afresh this morning. Rebo satala de bosha, rande boson tolo bobori da da bosan talababa. Abreze ketere baba ye, rima son tolo boyandele baba ya. Reda kosoto braya. Father, fill us afresh, Holy Ghost. Fill us with your Holy Spirit. Oh, everyone in this house this morning, we ask for a fresh baptism of your Spirit. A fresh baptism of your Spirit, Lord, that with the evidence of speaking in tongues, Maleda Brian Dolobosha, Asatala da Baye de Bosoto Braya, Eman de Bosotali de Lebo Santa la Baba, Abraze de Corida Boshanda Brian de Lebo. Hey, fill us to overflowing this morning. Fill us to overflowing in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus. Father, we bless you. We give you all the glory and the praise. The power to be a witness. Lord, Jehovah is released upon us afresh this morning. We will go forth and we will speak for you. You said we are witnesses that you are God. In our life, oh God, you will do miracles in our life. That we will go forth to proclaim your wonders to the world in the name of Jesus. Father, we bless you this morning. Receive all the glory and the praise, Father. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. Let's have a seat in his presence. Hallelujah.